Welcome to Loaded Mag NUFC um, as we look at our player focus. And uh, uh, as Daz has got right behind him on his screen, we're looking at the potential of Fabian Shah's successor. Not to be sold, but potential successor. And whilst there's a number of players out there, there's one player that uh, stuck in our minds, um, certainly at Loaded Mag NFC, and it is Jean Claire Todibo. So, um, currently at Nice, formerly of Barcelona, um, a right sided centre back um, who is making waves in Ligue 1 at the moment. Um, boys, I'll come to you, and Daz, I'll come to you first. You know, what do you make of, uh, of this particular player, and, and, and what do you think about the links? to him with Newcastle United. Well, delighted that we're linked with him. Uh, a few little notes I've made, made on him. I, I, I remember I used to identify him on uh, Football Manager back in, back in the day. But uh, Great height, 6.2. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, he's uh, 22. He's French. Can play can play in either of the centre back positions. Uh, he's right footed. Um, he's been in a number of clubs as, as you've uh, alluded to already, Pete. Like uh, playing in Spain and in France. Um, he's got strength, pace. He's aggressive. He's good uh, timing and his tackle. His awareness is good as well. And uh, he's no nonsense. No nonsense. A bit like a bit like Char. So uh, that's what more do you need? And uh, I think he would be the perfect partner for Botman. Interesting, interesting, Chris. Um, what what do you make of these potential links with um, Jean Claire uh, Tadibo? Um, what do you know about him? Uh, and you know, is it the right move looking at a Shaw successor? You know what, Pete? I think I think if you'd asked me this question a couple of months ago, I probably would have said there was other areas of the team you know that I would like to see us strengthen. We all acknowledge that Jamal Lascelles, um How long he stays at the club, I don't know. But I think he's a player who the, the, the club will be looking to move on, looking to replace. Um, and I think Tadebo kind of ticks a lot of boxes, as Daz has already alluded to. Big, tall lad. Getting a lot of attention in league in, like you said, Pete. He's been he's been doing doing particularly well. Um he's got a he's got a colourful history. Obviously, he's been he's been at the likes of Barcelona, Schalke, Benfica, Nice. So he's been man the block. And I think having Having been linked with someone like him, who's at a great age, as we keep we keep talking about great, great age, age. Um, I, I think he's a player who has certainly got a lot of potential, a high ceiling, um, and he, he'd be someone, you know, if if you had a what 22, 23 year old Botman paired alongside a Tadebo who's also of a similar age, um, it would be exciting for us going forward. And I think, I think he seems to have the attributes that Eddie Howe would look for. I think he's quite pacey. Uh, I think he's good on the ball technically. Um, which which we've got in Fabian Shah, but obviously Fabian Shah's not getting any younger. He's now early 30s. Um, and, you know, he's a player who I think would be suited to the Premier League. Big, as I said before, big, strong lad. And I think, oh, there you go. <laughs> that, picture, <laughs> that picture is proof there, Pete. You don't need any more proof than that. that that's um, Shah, if you ask me. It's identical to Shah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, there's a lot of noises around him. And I, I always find, you know, there's there's no smoke without fire. So any any player who's been linked um, and is doing well for his respective club and there's a lot of clubs circling, I think that's normally a good sign. And I don't, I don't know about you lads, but I mean, how much how much should we say he's going to be available? Would you think, you know, we know there's not that much money in French League football outside of PSG. <laughs> would it be would it be maybe 25, 30 million euros? Would that be reasonable? Am I, am I around the right ballpark there? Figures I saw were like he's in the website, he's valued around 30 million. But is, is there any talk right. about a release clause around him? I, I, I found one, one site, but I don't really trust it. It was saying something like 43.1 million, which is very exact. So, uh, but I, I, I don't know. Um, I'd say they'll, they'll demand a fee, uh, a nice little fee for him, all right? For me, um, I, I think it would be north of. 30 to 35 million. It wouldn't surprise me if it went into the sort of 40 to 45 million um, for a centre back. Uh, for his age, great age. We've great talked age. About before. age. Um, and, and his potential. Um, I, I think Nisa are in a position to 
to command that sort of fee. Um, and for all the reasons that you guys have just said, he, for me, he he is someone that's wanted by a lot of top teams. Um, you know, the likes of Man United, um, Chelsea is still looking for another centre back replacement for the likes of Thiago Silva. Um, Tottenham are looking for centre backs, but we're in a great position that we're fighting for Champions League, and 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 we're in and around the mix of all of these teams that are potentially linked with him now. He's a player that we talked about on the fully loaded transfer show this time last year in the summer um, as being linked to Newcastle United. So there may well be history there, which might go in our favour if we've courted him for a long time. But what does he give? You know, why? I, I put this on the other one. Why do we? Why are Newcastle United interested in him? In the in the one area that lets us down slightly on our right hand side of our defence is pace. This guy has pace. OK, um, he has pace to burn. He's quick in his recovery. Uh, he does well in recovering the ball at pace. Um, so that is a key area there. Now, then I look at, well, you know, how are you going to replace Fabian Shaw on the ball? Because he's fantastic on the ball. Great progressive passer, can bring the ball out of defence. So can this guy. Um, may well not have the long range of passing, that, um, that Fabian Shaw does, but he offers something with regards to his ability on the ball, progressing the ball up, being comfortable in possession, which, again, is a, a trait that Eddie Howe is trying to build in this team. But as you talked about, Chris, he's as strong as an ox. He is not letting anyone off the ball easily, and he'll stand his ground. And that's something that I think that holds a lot of weight when looking at a player for the future, um, because you can build on that and you can develop that and you can develop other areas of his game that may not be as strong. Um, you know, for, for, for a tall enough guy, his heading needs to improve. He's not the greatest of headers. Um, so that's an area that he can improve on. Um, and so there is a rough diamond in there that I think we can work with, in my opinion. And I think yeah. that um, someone like him at that sort of price is again like Botman when we paid 30 to 35 million for him last summer is someone that you can invest the next 10 years in and if you've got Botman and Jean-Claire Tadibo as a center back pairing going forward that's a Champions League center back pairing in the yeah. making there was no doubt about that mm. but what do you, do you think do you think Pete just touching on what you were saying it just made me think you know Sven Botman, we we well, I like to think that we all know what his main qualities are. Um, one thing he's not blessed with is pace. I wouldn't say Sven Botman is slow, but he's certainly <clears throat> not really a quick player. So, do you think that Eddie Howe would sacrifice, you know, the likes of the heading that you were talking about, the long distance passing? Do you think he'd sacrifice that for someone who's particularly key when it comes to recoveries? So, you know, if if a mistake is made, he's got that pace to burn, he'll get back, he'll help recover. He's strong, similar to to, to Sven Botman. Do you think that um do you think that Eddie Howe would maybe target um a few key attributes that maybe aren't Sven Botman's, you know, main strengths to kind of complement each other? Because we we've seen it in the past, haven't we? You know, with the likes of with the likes of uh, John Terry with uh, Rio Ferdinand, you know, Rio Ferdinand was extremely comfortable on the ball and technically very, very good. And then you had that battering ram of John Terry who would have different strengths. Also good on the ball, don't get me wrong, and his his range of passing was good, but they complemented each other quite well because the one was better at something than the other. So do you think that we see that in our next, you know, our next right centre back in that they're not going to be identical. There will be one that maybe outweighs the other in certain areas. You have to. You have to with a centre-back pairing. They have to have different traits and different qualities. You know, you look at the centre-back pairings of, um, you know, you talked about it, John Terry and uh, Al Farah and Ricardo Carvalho. Um, mm. He was, uh, it, they s supplemented themselves really well because Ricardo Carvalho was was excellent on the ball. It was calm in possession. Um, you know, Rio Ferdinand was calm on the ball as a Man, Man United centre-back, but Vidic was the sweeper. Now, what's going to be interesting, potentially, if this signing comes about, is that um, Sven Botman has been used to being the sweeper in his in his defence. He did it uh, with Jose Font uh, um, at Lille. Um, he was always the sweeper, so Font would come out with the ball, and if the ball went in and behind, Botman would sweep up. He's done the same with Shaw this season. But actually, although he's not... 
although he's not slow, he hasn't got the blistering pace to get back. Now, is it going to be a little bit something similar, like a, and I'm talking high level here, um, not saying these boys are on this level yet, but are we looking at a, um, a Sergio Ramos, uh, Rafael Varane type partnership in yeah. the, uh, you know, uh, Ramos brings the ball out on the left-hand side. Will Botman bring the ball out next season and be more progressive? Because we know he can do that. He hasn't done it as much this season. He's left it to Shaw for long parts of, uh, of most games to come and be progressive. Are we going to see him be more progressive? And if the ball does go in behind, are we going to use then John Kerr to Debo's pace to get back in and recover? Is that something that we're going to look at potentially? Yeah. Um, so you're right in asking the question, you know, um, Styles make um, make partnerships and, and having different styles to come together and connect make the difference. And we've just talked about two centre-back pairings there. We, sorry, three. Uh, we could have yeah. talked about a load more. So that's where it, it could potentially work. One, one last question, but before I do, just remind people to like and subscribe to, to Lotus. Uh, and these, and hoping you're enjoying these new little short videos we have. The last question, that last, is uh, one... Would you would you take him to Newcastle? And two, do you think he is the one that we could bring to Newcastle even without Champions League football? Very good question. Very good question. Um, go on, Pete, you go. You go. Um, there's no doubt in in my mind that we can bring him to Newcastle United. No doubt in my mind whatsoever. Um, we're a different entity now. People are looking at Newcastle United as the team that they see their career developing at. And uh, uh, Jean Claire Tidibo, um, it you know, he 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 will only have to look at Alan St. Maximin coming from Nice to Newcastle to know that there is progression there, that there is a future there in being a household name in a club, um, uh, moving from France to England. Um, I think Jean Claire Tidibo has got the ability to go beyond an Alan St. Maximin and have longevity at this club and really excel at this club. Um, great question. With regards to um, whether we can get him if we get Europa League, um, I believe we could. Yeah, mm -hmm. like you, Chris. Completely agree. Completely agree. Um, I think. I think. Unlike uh, Sabaz Light that we were talking about uh, on another show, I think um, Tadebo is probably. He's probably not in that top bracket at the minute. Not to say he can't get there, but I don't think he's in that top, top bracket where you've got elite clubs looking at him, like the elite of the elite. So therefore, I think, um, you know, a Newcastle project in the Premier League, um, already we've seen, you know, the likes of Bruno take the plunge, Botman take the plunge ahead of other clubs. So I don't see I don't see why we couldn't uh, couldn't attract Tadebo to Newcastle. Absolutely not. Nice one. That's, that, that's what he's up there. Uh, only one last thing to say. How'd you like that? All around the house.